Pharaoh. We all know Pharaoh. Pharaoh was the Pharaoh, the king, around the time of Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Pharaoh was evil. He claimed, he himself claimed to be a god, astaghfirullah. And at the same time, he would kill people that opposed him. He would kill men, women, and children. And he had killed babies already. This is already has been established. But subhanAllah, when, when Nabi Musa salam, is given the message, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tell him? He says in the Quran, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, فَقُولَ لَهُ قَوْلًا لَيْنًا فَقُولَ قَوْلًا لَيْنًا لَعَلَّهُ يَتَذَكَّرُ أَوْ يَخْشَعُ It says, SubhanAllah, it says, speak to him gently, so perhaps he may be mindful of me, or fearful, or fearful of my punishment. So even after this person has done all these negative things, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he still wants his prophet to approach him with perfect akhlaq, so that even then he doesn't have an excuse against Nabi Musa alayhi salam. Even then, he is approaching him with what? With kind words, easy words, so that at that way it's easier for even for Aum to accept the truth. But as we know, he never accepted it. So it therefore makes sense for us that we have to have good akhlaq, good manners, but manners is not very simple, per se, because sometimes it's the opposite of what we think. In the Quran it says about the Prophet, And it says, And indeed you are of great moral character. So we're looking towards the Prophet So let's describe him. I'll give you some brief traits, and I'll give you traits that are almost, they seem almost the opposite. But this is sort of showing the subtlety of his akhlaq, his bravery. The Prophet was very brave. In fact, the Prophet was said to be the bravest amongst all of his companions. Back then, the fighting was very, very intense during the wars. During the time of the Prophet he had approximately 30 wars that he had to go towards. And over those 30 wars, in those short nine years, these wars were intense. Arrows flying, spears, hands getting cut off, spears getting thrown, people dying all around you. And what does Imam Ali say about this? We all remember the bravery of Imam Ali, but what does Imam Ali say? He says that whenever the fighting got really intense, there were a few occasions where the fighting was extreme, where the enemies reached the Prophet and they reached him, and they were trying to kill him, and he was getting injured even, and he was fighting. Imam Ali Islam says, during that time when the battle was most difficult, most intense, they would go next to the Prophet together to uh, be inspired by his courage. So even in that moment, even in that moment he showed his extreme bravery. So where do you think Imam Ali Islam learned all of his courage from? He learned it from the Prophet, he was raised by him. Now let's look at the opposite. The opposite of this, but it's part of the same akhlaq, his shyness. SubhanAllah, the Prophet Sallallahu was so polite and conscientious of other people, he even avoided looking at them directly in their eyes out of respect for them. Even when he left a room with his companions, he never left first. You know how usually when we're getting up to leave, you get your father to leave first, and he's the one, in, he's the one that leaves first, and then the others. And the Prophet, in this example, and every time he left, he always made sure that his companions left first so that he could almost honor them. He showed them his akhlaq. He always put himself last. And he always put his manners at the very top. Even when he was shaking hands with someone, subhanAllah, what would he do? He would shake hands with them, but he wouldn't move his hand first. Just because he didn't even want them to think that he didn't want to shake their hand longer. He wouldn't let go of their hand until they let go of his hand. So he never even moved his hand away like that. Even if people insulted him, he would respond either with silence or with kind words, just like as the Quran says. Obviously, the Ahlul Bayt also picked up on these traits because they learned them from the Prophet directly. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an opposite example. There was a person, this is not to do with the other, this happened in Arabia recently. Someone 
someone went uh, with his sons to a restaurant to order some food, and this is in Arabia. And then the person, one of the persons at the restaurant insulted the father. SubhanAllah, the son afterwards came back and killed that person. He shot him. He killed him. This is a lack of love. This is the worst case. Now let's look at a very similar situation, but how did the Ahlul Bayt respond to it? There was a time, this is after the death of Imam Ali Islam. So Imam Ali Islam had already passed away. Imam Hassan Islam was inside the city. Someone comes up to Imam Hassan, and what does he start doing? He starts swearing at Imam Ali. He starts swearing at Imam Ali, and he starts swearing at Imam Hassan Islam. Imam Hassan Islam, how much he loves his father, how much he cares about his father. And still, even at that point, what does he say? What does Imam Hassan Islam say to this person? So imagine you love your father and someone is swearing at him and he's already passed away. It's even worse. Imam Hassan Islam says to him, you oh stranger, you look like you are new to this town. Do you need any water? Do you need any food? Do you need a place to stay? I can give you a place to stay. SubhanAllah, even in that instance, he didn't even respond with any anger or any rage. This person felt so embarrassed, he took Imam Hassan's offer. He joined Imam Hassan Islam, and after that he became a shiri. He became a shiri after swearing at Imam Ali. One day, Imam Hassan Islam, through his akhlaq, he shows us how to respond to these people. So these are just very extreme examples, and I say this again, it's very hard to follow this. But the Ahlul Bayt have given us these examples because they expect us to learn from them. We're not expected to look at all their effort and then just throw it away. We're expected to follow this type of behavior. So inshallah, I'll finish up very briefly. Now we compare ourselves, our own akhlaq. Let's compare our own akhlaq to the akhlaq of the Imams and the Ahlul Bayt Our akhlaq, imagine if someone has an argument with you. For three weeks you wouldn't even speak to them. For a month you wouldn't speak to them. Even worse, imagine that two families have an issue. The Ahlul Bayt what they're trying to teach us is that in these instances, these, these were people that were against the Ahlul Bayt. This is how polite they were to the people that swore at Imam Ali Islam. And they use the akhlaq to switch them to become shiris. But now, amongst ourselves, we are all lovers of the Ahlul Bayt, inshallah. We all love Imam Ali Islam. So what does that mean? It means our akhlaq amongst each other should be even to a higher extent. Our forgiveness should be to an even higher extent because we are all on the same path and we are all under the same Imam Islam. Obviously, one last example, just to show you the full forgiveness. Imam Hussein Islam, at the final days, this is on the 10th of, on the 10th of Muharram, Ashura. What does he do? He gives a speech to the enemy soldiers. And this is before all of the fighting and the bloodshed has started. Meaning what? He gave them a speech, he gave them advice, he wanted them to be guided. And this is the intention we should show with our Akhlaq. Eventually what happened? Eventually what happened? One of the main people, one of the main people that first got Imam Hussein Islam from the water, ran towards Imam Hussein on that day, and he begged for his forgiveness instantly, instantly. Imagine someone blocks you, your family, and your whole loved ones, all of you from water, and he comes to you and he says to you, can I have some forgiveness? And instantly Imam Hussein alayhi salam tells him you are forgiven. This is the story of Imam Hussein and Khodok, and he's a Gilgaki, one of the companions that died with Imam Hussein. So of course, of course, the Ahlul Bayt are showing us this Akhlaq, but they expect us to follow it. Expect us to follow it with our enemies, and expect it especially amongst ourselves. Ahlul Hamid Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.